Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm giving two toolboxes a makeover using IOD transfers. You can find a full product list in the description of this video and all your crafting needs on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Our first toolbox is, as you can see, well used, well loved. I am loving the rusty spots on there, but I wanted a different base. I didn't want it to be red. So I'm going to spray the entire thing inside and out with Rust-Oleum Black Spray Paint. This is going to achieve a few things. This is going to give a great base if I want to distress my paint back and it's also going to prep the surface perfectly for paint. Once my paint is completely dry, I'm going to be using some of Dixie Bell's and Lashore Silk Mineral Paint. This has a built-in stain blocker, so I know it's going to block any of the rust bleeding through, and it also has a built-in top coat. So I'm going to give this piece three coats of the and Lashore and then let it dry thoroughly. As you can probably see, I'm not being careful to get full coverage. I don't mind if some of that black peeks through. I'm also going to be leaving the handle black, but painting over any of the other hardware. I'm so excited to be doing these toolbox projects with you guys today. I've seen so many amazing creators do them on Pinterest and YouTube. It's exciting to try it myself. To decorate our first toolbox, I'm going to be using IOD's traditional pots transfer and the brocante transfer. This is definitely one of my favorite transfers. I have some lovely florals that I'm yet to use. So I'm going to cut out two designs that I am going to use one on the left side and one on the right side. Once I have my first few designs ready, I'm going to position them where I want them to go. I'm creasing where I'm going to have to cut them because we are splitting the design. I've removed the backing and now I'm rubbing the transfer using the transfer tool that comes in the pack to rub the design down. You can see I lift the plastic as I go and then I also further burnish the design with the carrier sheet. Then I'm putting the second part of the transfer up the top and you can see you can bend these really easily around corners, over curves, and they work beautifully. I just definitely recommend that you take your time and work in sections. I did decide to trim the extra text off the bottom of the second floral that we're attaching. I just felt it was a bit better balanced this way. So I'm just repeating the same steps, rubbing and burnishing the design down and lifting the plastic as I go. Now I want to add some text. So I'm actually going into the traditional pots transfer. I have some text left over on that one. And now I am just working out how I want it positioned and then repeating the same steps. These transfers are so easy to use guys. They make doing these sorts of projects so easy. So many beautiful things to choose from. I'm also gonna add some text up the top and a lot of these are scraps. They're bits and pieces that I've cut off from other projects. So I never throw away those bits and pieces. I always keep those because you never know when they're going to come in handy. The toolbox has an uneven surface because of the rust and the chipped paint. So after I am transferring each image, I am also using my fingers to make sure I'm really working that transfer in. Here you can see that I trimmed a couple of designs apart to create the text for the top. If you don't have any transfers that have text on them, remember you could always do some stamping or perhaps do a stencil instead. As a final touch for this toolbox, I'm going to position these sweet little bees from the brocante transfer either side of the text up the top. If you wanted to achieve something similar on a toolbox that you have at home, you could always use decoupage paper. If you don't have transfers, you could do stamping and perhaps even paint those stamped images. You could definitely come in with those things instead of the transfers. You don't have to have exactly what I'm using today. This is just some ideas for you to be inspired by. 
I want to add to the vintage feel, so I'm taking some 220 grit sandpaper and I'm distressing back the paint on the handles and I'm also going to be lightly distressing the transfers that I've added to the toolbox. I want to be very careful here not to destroy the image, I just want to give it a bit of a distressed look. If this look isn't for you, remember you can just leave this particular step out. Once I've removed all the sanding dust, I'm going to seal my transfers in with some of Dixie Belle's flat clear coat. I'm going to be adding two even coats of this. And here's our first finished toolbox. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I can imagine this with seed packets and garden tools. I think it's taken something that was looking really tired and turned it into something that would look beautiful in any home. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Our next toolbox is a little bit smaller, but we have that red coming in again. So after giving this a wipe down, I'm going to repeat the same process as the first project. I'm going to be giving this an even coat of some Rust-Oleum black spray paint. It's going to seal this all in and give us a great base to work with. Once this is completely dry, I'm going to come in with Endless Shore Silk Mineral Paint again. I love this as a base color. And again, I'm not being super careful to get full coverage here. And I do want to leave that handle the same black color that it originally was. While I'm painting this particular box, I do have to be mindful to open up the lid and get the sections that you can't see while they're closed. And I also need to make sure that I'm not adding too many layers of paint so that this will not close properly. I need to make sure that there is enough of a gap. So you will see shortly that I do open up the lid so that I can paint these sections that I missed while the lid was down. I'm going to give this three coats of the Endless Shore and then let it dry thoroughly. Next, I'm going to be using IOD's Floral Anthology and we're grabbing that brocante transfer out again. I love Floral Anthology. I have used this on so many projects and now I'm going to use one of the larger floral designs. I'm going to pull it out. First of all, I'm going to trim off the extra flowers that are on the side and then I'm going to organize the larger design. I'm working out how I want to use it on my toolbox and I'm going to crease where I need to cut and then very carefully trim. I'm creasing where I need to cut up the top so we can split the design. And then when I'm ready, I've peeled the backing off and I'm positioning the transfer on the toolbox and I'm starting to burnish. I am going to have to bend this around the corner. You can see here it bends really easy and I'm just transferring the design down using that tool, rubbing and lifting the plastic as I go. This is a little bit repetitive which is why I've sped it up guys, but you definitely get the point. This is a very easy way to update decor around your home. I've got the first transfer down. Now I'm going to position the transfer that we trimmed for the top and rub and burnish that down as well. Now I'm going to grab the second half of the design that I trimmed. I'm going to position that where I want it. Again, I'm creasing where I'm going to have to cut and then trimming the top section. I'm going to peel off the backing sheet and then I'm going to position that where I want it to go. You can see I do lift up the toolbox lid a little bit to help there. And this one I actually bent around twice. So you can really see that these are very flexible to use and you can use them on pretty much any surface. So just repeating those processes, uh, rubbing and burnishing and just going slow as I'm lifting that carrier sheet. 
Now I'm adding the transfer that we trimmed from up the top, just making sure that I'm lining it up properly with the design and then rubbing it and burnishing it down. Next, I'm going to grab some text from the brocante transfer. I'm going to trim it in half so I can have some above the handle and some below. I'm peeling off the backing and then burnishing the design down. I love how you can mix and match these transfers. They all go so beautifully together. So I'm getting my text down here, but I did decide that there was something missing. I wanted a little bit more of the florals creeping up from the bottom. So I've taken some of the floral anthology transfer again, and I'm going to to position it a little bit on the side of the lid. I'm bending it and then burnishing it onto the top. I just like the hint of the florals creeping up onto the lid. I just think it really ties the whole design together. If you want to give this project a go but you don't have access to a toolbox, you could always use some sort of a metal lunchbox perhaps or a fishing tackle box, a metal canister, anything really. You can add some paint and some transfers and you can give it a beautiful makeover and repurpose it for your home. Next, I'm using some 220 grit sandpaper to lightly distress my transfers. I'm also going to lightly distress the handles and the locking mechanism and some of the edges. Once I've wiped off all the sanding dust, I'm going to use some of Dixie Belle's flat clear coat. I'm adding two coats to seal my transfers down. And here's our second finished toolbox. I'm so happy with how this turned out. Those transfers are a work of art. They are beautiful to work with. I could actually imagine this maybe with some painting supplies, some brushes, some craft goodies. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video and that it's inspired you to give some old toolboxes, canisters, or whatever you have lying around a makeover with some paint and some transfers. It's a really easy way to update that decor. Let me know which of these was your favorite. If you enjoyed today's video, I would love it if you could give it a thumbs up, comment, and share it out to a friend that you think might enjoy it. If you're not already, I would appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used in today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.